Welcome to our first installment of Math on the Move. This first part of the series will focus on math talk. What was your math experience like? Was there any talk? Were you encouraged to share your thinking? Today math class is rarely quiet. Students are encouraged to talk in math to share thinking. Take a moment to pause and think for yourselves and then maybe just have a short conversations with your elbow partners. We know that promoting classroom discussion and talk supports the development of understanding in our students. Many teachers in our board have adopted Math Talk Moves, which supports the creation of a Math Talk learning community. In this environment, students are highly engaged, accountable, and willing to take risks to deepen their understanding of mathematics. One Math Talk Move strategy is revoicing. In a productive Math Talk community, students take ownership of the talk and revoice each other's mathematical thinking. Sometimes this requires a prompt. Please notice in the clip following that the teacher prompts the students to revoice or put in their own words what someone else has stated. Also notice that the teacher allows wait time for the students to formulate their thoughts. Someone, someone revoiced what Caitlin said to me, said for me. So she talked about privacy. Someone put that into their own words for me. Think about that one for a minute. If a yard is private, what does that mean in the yard? I'm just going to wait for a second and let you give you a chance to think. Another Math Talks move strategy is reasoning. Reasoning is used to elicit discussion of ideas. Students are given a problem and then asked to take a position. Students then talk through their ideas and thoughts. The most important part of this strategy is the why. It's not enough for a student to either agree or disagree with a statement. They must explain why. In the next clip, notice how students talk through their ideas and come up with a plan to provide the why. So we thought since each house has the same area, which is we found it was 650 meters squared, and if it has the same area, would it have the same perimeter? So we were thinking that it would I have the same perimeter. And my group agrees with me because they might um, I would say maybe, but I would challenge that, and I say we actually do it and figure it out. I say we do the math as well. Well, we thought that the, air, the whole house was the area, but then we figured that the actual area would be the square and the rectangle. And since we did the three and the four, we knew that since the area had to be the same, it couldn't have been that. So we had to make the area the same, but the perimeter different instead of the perimeter the same and the area different. Okay, got it. We figured out this. The little help, with the little bit of help. And it was like, so we had to make the same area. And then we like counted the size that and I like showed as a fence board. And it was like, that had eight fence boards and then this one had 10. So that would obviously cost more money, so house A would be the better choice because it would cost less money because that's the less perfect. Okay, so we added the length and the feet, and then we divided by two. We have two different perimeters, even though it's the same area. So that's not what I was expecting. Yeah. Adding on is another math talk strategy that our teachers utilize. Teachers ask students to add on to discussion ideas and build an understanding together. Here are some examples of how this strategy is used. Okay, Ryan, so I heard you talk about the condition of the yard. You talked about grass. Can anybody add on to what they think the condition of the yard would be? What do you think that would be? Is that hills on? Hills, so terrain. Siobhan, what would you like to add to the conversation? Uh, going on what Dylan said, it depends on if they have any pets, because if they have a dog, maybe they want more grass than pavement. Repeating involves asking students to repeat another student's thoughts, but putting it in their own words. This is similar to revoicing, but it's asking that the student's ideas be repeated and not the teacher's. The benefit of this strategy lies in the fact that it gives students more time to process ideas. It allows for students to rehear ideas and ensures that other students can participate in the discussion fully. If the student did not hear the first idea, the likelihood that they heard the second rendition of the thought is greatly increased. Let's watch this strategy in action. Um, can you help us out? And I just want to make sure that I'm hearing what Kaya is saying. What are some of Kaya's big ideas? What is she thinking? I 
Um, you, it said that the fences need to be replaced, so you could uh, use the area and try to find the perimeter to determine how much you might need to pay for the fences to be replaced. Jordan, um, while I'm thinking out loud here, you can either rephrase what Kaya was saying, or if you have any questions for Kaya as to why she's thinking what she's thinking, you can ask her as well. Kaya is trying to say that she needs to find out how much um, fence that she needs to buy for the new house. Just remind us why we have to do this fence thing. Because the fences need to be replaced as soon as they move in. Right, okay. I just wanted to make sure I definitely knew what the problem was. So knowing some of the strategies our teachers are using, how can we as parents use this information to help our students with mathematics? If you notice, the commonality behind all the Math Talks Move strategies is to get our students to talk about their thinking. We ask them to revoice, to reason, to add on, and to repeat. When working with our students, sometimes we discover that a simple misinterpretation of a thought or concept may cause confusion. This can be rectified by having the student explain their thought process. When we see it from the student's perspective, we can then see the reasoning that got them to their answer. And it is by having the student talk about their reasoning that we are able to see if they truly understand the concept. When working on math problems at home, have your child talk through the thought process. Ask them to revoice and to explain how they got their answer. Ask them to take a position and defend it mathematically. When students talk about their math thinking, they will better understand the concepts being taught. Using the same Math Talks Move strategy shown here can spark conversations about math which will lead to a better understanding. Thank you for watching.